Good morning. I have a very interesting case and a very fascinating case today. And I thought I will share this with you. It has some good learning pearls and some good learning lessons. So let's get started. This is the clinical history. A 26-year-old man presented to the emergency room with the first nocturnal tonic-clonic seizure. Over the next six months, he had two more tonic-clonic seizures and was started on leviteracetam, which is also called Keppra. Now, this was a number of years ago, and I was told that after the first seizure, nobody was absolutely certain if it was an epileptic seizure. This was a nocturnal event. We did not have a very good description, and patient was not started on any anti-epileptic medications. So following the other two seizures, he was started on Keppra. A CT scan of the head was done at this time, and it was reported as normal. He was seizure-free for two years on levetiracetam and then began experiencing frequent spacing out episodes on a weekly basis. He did not report missing any medications, did not report anything that has changed. His sleep habits were fine. So there was no clear explanation as to why he was having the spacing out episodes. He had a repeat EEG done. So the initial EEG, as you might recall, was normal and the CT scan of the head was reported as normal. So he had a repeat EEG and an MRI of the brain. So in this tutorial, I will review his history and investigations followed by some clinical pearls at the end of the session. And of course, we will review his EEG as well. So the past EEG was normal and I'm not going to show that to you. This was the CT scan that was done after the first seizure and I'm only showing you one slice of the CT scan and this was reported as normal. Now following the spacing out episodes, this was after being two years seizure free, he had another EEG and this is what the EEG showed there. For those of you who are new to the channel and for those of you who are not very familiar with EEG, Channels that end with the odd number are recording from the left side of the brain. Channels that end with the even number are recording from the right side of the brain. And the channels that end with the letter Z are recording from the midline. S and A average, those are just my initials. This is an average reference that I had created. I'm not going to go into the detail of the montage, just it is basically an average of many of the electrodes that are used uh, for recording EG. Now, let's see if you're able to identify what are the striking abnormalities? What do you see here? Do you see a posterior dominant rhythm? What about here? So there is some alpha frequency in O1. And in fact, you see something on O2. But the thing that is really that really jumps out on this EG is these abnormalities right here. So you can see an asymmetric slowing on the right hemisphere. This is all the way here, all the way here. And then you see some sharp waves. So these are the sharp waves right here. So you see some sharp waves with highest amplitudes at F8 and T4 with the field extending to FP2 and F4. So let's move on to the next slide here. This is the same EEG, but I've compressed it to 15 millimeters per second. As I've said in previous videos, Compressing the EEG can give you a better understanding of the pattern of evolution. So you can see the slowing that is quite prominent in the right frontal and temporal head region. And the sharp waves are a bit more clear here. Those appeared broad sharp waves in the previous slide and are much better visualized once you compress the EEG. This is another slide on the same patient, still using the average reference montage. And you can see the sharp waves and you can see the asymmetric slowing in the right hemisphere. It's always important to keep an eye on the ECG channel and make sure there is no asymmetry, uh, excuse me, and making sure that there are no abnormalities on the EKG, which we do not see over here. And this is one more slide on the same patient. This time I'm using a bipolar montage and you can see face reversal. So this is where the sharp waves are. Interestingly, throughout this recording, so this EG that was repeated two years after being seizure-free, showed almost a persistent slowing in the right hemisphere and frequent sharp waves on the right side. So now 
keep in mind that the first CT scan of the head was normal. So when it comes to CT scans, whenever somebody presents with a focal seizure or a seizure for that purpose, if a person presents with a seizure, the reason we do CT scans is to make sure that we rule out obvious abnormalities. So we want to make sure a person does not have a brain tumor, a person does not have a brain abscess, a person does not have any bleeding in there. We want to make sure there is no marks of scarring from some old injury. So those were ruled out on the CT scan that we saw here. So you look at the CT scan, we do not see an absence, we do not see uh, a skull fracture, we do not see any obvious abnormalities. But considering that this patient had persistent slowing and sharp waves coming from the right hemisphere, one of the differential diagnoses would be to make sure that there is no structural abnormality in the right hemisphere. When you request an MRI, make sure you request it with seizure protocol. So what I do is I request for coronal flare images through the hippocampus and axial SWI images through uh, ax axial SWI images and also do axial uh, flare images. So in this patient, you can see the abnormality. So let's see if you are able to identify it. If not, let me show it to you. You see a very bright signal in the right mesial temporal structure here. And this is the hippocampus and also involving the amygdala. And this is a coronal image and you can see the asymmetric signal on the right side. So this is the asymmetric signal on the coronal section in the right mesial temporal structure. This is one more slide showing the abnormality there. I'm not going to go into too many details about the differential diagnosis when you see an abnormal signal. An abnormal signal can be seen in somebody who has been seizing from that area for quite some time, or a low-grade glioma can also present with such an abnormal signal, which requires further investigations. So the clinical pearls to learn from this is that MRI of the brain provides a much better resolution than the CT scan and should be considered in all patients with focal seizures with a normal CT scan. So if you have a patient who presents with focal seizure and you do not have an explanation why this person has a focal seizure on a CT scan, then consider requesting an MRI of the brain. A normal EEG does not rule out the diagnosis of epilepsy and does not rule out a structural abnormality. So if the first EEG is abnormal, you can consider repeating the EEG and that increases the diagnostic yield. An EEG can help localize an epileptic generator even if imaging studies are reported normal. In this case, the MRI did turn out to be abnormal. But even if you have a normal MRI, even if you have a normal CT scan of the head, EEG can help you lateralize and localize an epileptic generator. So thank you for your attention. I hope to see you in the next tutorial. If you have any comments about this tutorial or if you have any questions or if there are certain subjects you want me to cover in the future videos, please leave those in your comments. Thank you so much.